And if you don't bloom, you are going in the trash, going in the trash, going in the trash. Hey guys, it's me Astrid, and today I wanted to talk about the difference between growing orchids, growing catacetum orchids in sphagnum moss and semi-hydroponic. So let's get started. So the first thing you should know about catacetum orchids is that they're kind of in a class of their own. They're deciduous orchids, meaning they lose all their leaves in the winter time. They have a dormancy period that is like probably stronger and drier than you're going to come across with most other orchids. Um, and then in the summertime, they grow really, really, really fast. So these are some unusual orchids. And because they grow so quickly, they do all this growth in only half the year, they become very, very heavy feeders and drinkers during the spring, summer, and early fall seasons. Because of this, you need a medium that um, gives them the opportunity to have lots of water all the time on demand as much as they want. And because of that, um, both semi-hydro and sphagnum moss prevent, present some really good options for you. Now, um, sphagnum moss is really nice because it holds moisture for a really long time. It holds many times its weight in water, um, but it can be a little slow to dry out sometimes. Um, you guys know you've dealt with sphagnum moss, so, um, but it's really not a problem in any way, shape, or form for growing catacetums. I think the biggest issue is that with sphagnum moss, you're going to have to repot you know, once a year or once every other year, whereas with Leca pellets, you're only going to have to repot when the roots are so bound that they can't um, fit in this pot anymore when the plant's too big. Now, um, something nice about Leca, growing catacetums in Leca, is that with Leca, it's pretty much impossible to overwater your orchids. Like, it's really, really, really hard. Um, it's nice and airy and open. There's lots of good gas exchange going on with the roots, which as I'm told through orchid knowledge is a good thing. Um, it keeps the roots healthy. And uh, the reservoir in the bottom allows the catacetum to drink up water as it pleases, which is also good. And as you can see, we've got two healthy, happy plants in two different growing methods. They're really good. But I want to tell you the one downside of growing in Leica pellets with catacetums, um, and it has to do with the heavy, heavy drinking and feeding in summertime. So I'm going to show you two catacetums that I have, one that's been growing for over a year in sphagnum moss, and one that's spent over a year in Leica that I just converted back to sphagnum moss. So here's my um, Clawicetum Pierre Coure Flamingo Spots. This thing has put it a growth this big in like uh, two months. It's amazing. And this one has um, its old back bulbs, which are all a little bit shrivelly, but that's typical. They're old. And this is the growth it put out last year. This big, fat, tall, like amply plump kind of growth, which is really, really good. And to me that says this had ample water all year it had as much water as it could possibly drink and it gave it the opportunity to get as plump as it could get. Good, right? Well, let's look at my Fred Clark Yara After Dark SVO Black Pearl. So you can see the two old growths. They're nice and big and plump and juicy, right? A little wrinkled, but again, they're old growth, so they should be a little wrinkled. And then here's the growth that I managed to grow last year. It's, you know, a lot taller than the others, but it's a lot thinner. It never ever got quite as plump as this one here. And the reason for that is because when you're growing catacetums and Leica pellets, they can take this reservoir of water and they can drink it in one day. Some of them are so thirsty that they'll drink it in an afternoon. So I would find myself needing to water these guys in Leica pellets during their active growth season every single day, sometimes even more. Because I was lazy and I didn't ever give it, you know, ample water all the time, I got a skinny growth, or at least that's my hypothesis between why this growth is skinny and this growth, having been in sphagnum moss all year, is nice and plump. You can see the difference in these two plants. So while I do love growing most of my orchids in semi-hydro, if you could see my shelf clearly, you would see 
and you can see they're all in little cocoa puffs, right? Um, I do love it for a majority of orchids. Cattleyas, fowls, dendrobiums, um, what else do I have? Uh, Brassavola. <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically the different genera of orchids I have right now, but I like it for a lot of different ones because none of those have such active and aggressive growth that they drink up water so quickly that you can't supply enough for them. Like with catacetums in summer, you almost can't give them enough water. Um, so for those heavy drinkers, I do feel like I'm going to start preferring sphagnum moss. That said, I still have a few catacetums left in, um, in Leca pellets, and so I'm going to do a multi-year study on these plants so I can give you results over several years of growth in Leca pellets, not just one, because we all know one growing cycle doesn't make a rule, right? Yeah. But that's my preference. Um, if you want to grow catacetum orchids in Leca pellets, a good time to convert them is right as they're coming out of dormancy. So let's say they have a little growth, you know, smaller than this, maybe not quite leafed out, um, not yet putting out roots or just starting to put out roots, that's when you want to repot it into whatever medium. You can cut off the old roots, but I find that they're helpful in keeping the back bulbs hydrated while the new ones are growing. So yeah, um, because I was a lazy orchid mom, my, my semi-hydro orchid didn't get quite as plump as it could have been with my catacetums. I hope that this kind of covers it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any more questions, please, you know, write them down below. I'll try to answer them. Maybe I'll do a follow-up on this video. I hope I kind of covered my main reason. If you want to know more about semi-hydroponics, you can go to uh, firstrays.com. Ray Barkalow came up with the method and he's got a message board about it and lots of good information. You can ask me. Um, and yeah, and if you want Catacetum Sunset Valley Orchids, Fred Clark, he's the way to go. Anyway, thank you so very much for watching my video. Have a wonderful day. Happy growing. Bye. Bye.